Hey, what's up, everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Um, so, uh, yesterday, or I guess it was the uh, day before, maybe, I posted a video on the Vortex separator. Uh, I also told you I was going to build a bubbler, and all night that night I went live and uh, I showed you guys the Vortex tube and uh, went live and built the bubbler and all this stuff, but I really didn't get a chance to break down the, the Vortex tube to kind of show you what's actually, like how I built it. So, I'm going to do that right now, as well as the bubbler. I got the bubbler done. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this is what the bubbler looks like. I got pictures in the background there. I'm going to show you uh, this thing disassembled. But uh, basically, there's three screws on the bottom. And um, that's this base plate. The three screws hold this bottom plate in. Uh, there's an O ring in the bottom of that. And then there are uh, some. Whoa, focus is whacked out. Uh, there's some. Uh, that's funny. There's some uh, slots, or I drilled some holes right here for where the gas could get out. And there's basically three tubes inside here. Um, and you're seeing the inner one there. Uh, and then the top the top comes off. Now the way I designed this is I want this thing to, um, I wanted the top to blow off under a, uh, a chance of a flashback. So that's what I actually wanted. I wanted that to blow off. So what I'm going to do here, I've actually got this Vortex tube hooked up to uh, uh, a pump and I'm just pumping water through it so I can check the the bubbles and stuff like that um, what I want to do is drill a couple more holes down here it's hard to see but I cut some notches in that and uh, hopefully that the bubbles would come out but the notches aren't big enough so I'm going to drill a couple of pinholes down there as well uh, but basically the air you can see is in between the other two tubes and then the bubbles come out around the outside and um, you know that's that's my homemade bubbler it's just a bunch of scrap again actually all of these tubes this is actually real thin walled tubed uh, and all of these tubes are uh, light covers uh, the inside and those are all light covers so kind of interesting um, here I'll show you the photos and um, I gotta quit saying um so there's the bottom you can see the bottom plate there how the o-rings are all fit in there um, there's the bottom piece. I put an O-ring here and then the three screws hold the two together. Uh, it's a half inch hole there. There's the, the top part where the air goes through. So it goes down and back around and back out. Put a seal on that. Um, there's the bottom uh, that fits together with that O-ring spot. There's the top cap. There's the bottom put together. There's the bottom put together. See, there's the inside tube. So the air, the air goes inside here, all right, and then back out through this small cavity, and then back around the big, the big cavity. So there it is, all put together. But anyway, I thought I'd show you those photographs because those are always helpful. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pressure test real quick, and then I'm going to break down, um, break down this thing so you can actually see it for yourself. Mm, let's see. There we go. So basically, I'm going to put this pressure gauge on here, and actually it blows off at about 10 PSI, which is great, but I wanted it more closer to 15, so I might put another O-ring in there. And this might make a mess, but I'll deal with it. Alright, so basically I'm just going to pump this thing up, and uh, hold my hand on here. You can see the pressure building. Once I get to about 10 psi, there it goes. So it basically the back, the back side here came off, and uh, oh, there you go. So the seals, the seal literally holds it together. So if I do have an overpressure, it just kind of blows the seal off, and. Uh, and that's it. So it's kind of cool. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is show you. This right here is just threaded in here. And uh, <clears throat> let's see if I open this, it should come out. That'll be good enough. Made a big old mess. All right, now the water's allowed to flow backwards because I've shut this or I've opened this. But what I wanted to do is take this um, this top cap off and show you how I made it. These are all just sealed together. Um, so, let's see if 
I can get this water to stay on my bench. That's good enough. So I wanted to kind of show you how I made this this base plate. Let me get the camera in a little bit better lighting maybe. There you go. So you can see that pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so basically the, the hole right here comes out the side and um, there you can see it and there's two o-ring seals right here one there and one there I know they're really hard to see but there's two o-ring seals in there I actually chucked this in a four gel chuck to make it so the tube sits right on this this ledge right here seals here oh man my water <laughs> probably going into my bike pump anyway <laughs> So uh, <clears throat> I just kind of want to show you how this thing actually went together and literally it just pops together and those seals hold that thing down. Um, what I want to be able to do is, uh, well that's it, I'm going to put a, I think what I'm going to do is put a high pressure hose in here, a tube, like a fine port so that it forces water faster. So right now there's less pressure here. And what's happening is it's uh, it's coming out the wrong way. Hold on, guys. Sorry, I gotta get this thing. I got I got a valve right here. I gotta close that off. It's all running into my air pump. Anyway, the bottom is the same way. It's sealed the same way. Um, and then again, those those holes going the other direction are kind of unique. Um, I do have a favor to ask everyone. Um, I did see a comment posted and. Um, mentioning that you work with these pumps a lot and it should be putting out more. Um, if anybody has a, a a pump, let me find the one I had. Uh, well, basically the one I had was just a little giant pump. Um, the box is right here. This is something I had found. This thing is like an antique, to be honest with you. Um, there's the model and make. It's a uh, 502103 and then the model number is 2E-N and it's 115 volts 60 cycles alright now what I have to, what, I, what the favor I have to ask is um, if anybody has a, a pump that is not submergible this is a submergible pump I need one that is um, you connect the end to it and connect the end to it and you cycle and you don't have to sub uh, Submerge it. Uh, if you do have one, uh, send me an email at rwg42985 at aol.com if you're willing to, uh, to donate it. Um, if you're not, um, that's great. I can uh, I find something, hopefully, that'll work. But I'm just throwing this out there because I know there's a lot of people who are willing to help. And I just want to throw that out there if you if you want to. I'll be even willing to buy one of the uh, little, little giant pumps um, for the EPG and just use it for this experiment and use it for the EPG. I would be okay, too. So... Just uh, get in contact with me if you think you, you want to do something like that, and uh, we'll go from there. So, peace, guys. Uh, that's it. I just wanted to give you a rundown of this thing, show you how it kind of fit together. Uh, the uh, the pressure, this is actually my pressure top. Oh, I do want to show one more thing to you. Um, I mentioned to you guys having a, uh, here it is, having a flashback arrestor. Um, and doing it the way Stan talks about the quenching tube and I did a lot of research and for those of you who do not know this I've done so much research on the quenching tube. Here's what I come up with um, These are battery cap vents All right, and these are designed These are plastics. I, I need ceramic ones. I can't find ceramic ones. These are plastic but these are designed to not allow the hydrogen from the battery being charged to ignite because of this port. So what I've done, this is my little torch, um, Blaine. That's your tip, buddy. So donations are definitely well being used here. Um, and inside here, if I can get this out. And this is going to be hard to see because there's no light. Here, let's see if this really old flashlight works. Uh, yeah, you can see it down in there. It's hard to see, but down inside there, I have glued one of these plastic things. Now this is a different size. The one I had was different. It fit right inside that hole. There's a half inch piece of tube. Now I did test this with just hydrogen with uh, Bill's gas splitter cell and it worked pretty well. 
So now we get to try it with the hydrogen. And now that I've got my um, my bubbler here that is kind of foolproof, hopefully. That I won't blow some stuff up. Stuff will just come flying apart, but it won't hurt nobody. Um, so yeah, that's a little torch I made for, for this experiment. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh yeah, in Stan's work, you don't see a bubbler. And the reason you don't see a bubbler is because... I keep dropping that. Not That's not why. It's because these right here, all right, his uh, quenching tube did not allow... It's so it, The holes are so small in it, it does not allow the oxygen, hydrogen, to ignite through it. There's not enough room to actually have combustion there. That's the reason he never had a bubbler. It's a fantastic idea. You can totally scrap the bubbler idea. Unfortunately for this right now in my test, I kind of need it. So that's it. I got to go. Peace out, guys. RWGResearch.com. Check out the forms for uh, for the quenching circuit uh, posts. I will actually put that in the description. All right. See you. Thanks for all your help, guys. Later.